I'm Nate Lind, and I help people interested in buying or selling online businesses get the transaction done without the deal falling apart. If you're looking to buy or sell online businesses, then be sure to keep tuning in for more videos like this one. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications about new videos and interviews. And introduce yourself in the comments. Are you a buyer or a seller? Enjoy the interview. Everybody, Nate Lind here. I have a past client of mine. His name is Viraj Patel. Viraj, you uh, uh, had a successful Amazon business. I wanted to get a little bit of your thoughts about uh, the sales process, kind of, you know, why you wanted to sell, that sort of stuff. So maybe you can give yourself a little bit of an introduction. And, um, and the first question I'd have for you after that is, why did you want to sell? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Viraj Patel. This is my fifth year uh, selling on Amazon. So, um, you know, I've, I guess I've kind of gone through, you know, a few of the cycles now. And um, I ran into Nate and website closers because um, I'm constantly looking for either new businesses or, you know, seeing how I can add to my portfolio or, or even planning to make some exits with already some businesses that I own to free up some cash. And um, I know this website closers was on a lot of different platforms and they had a ton of ton of content out there. So I, uh, yeah, um, I had actually, funny enough, I was initially going with another brokerage or website, um, but my sister, I believe, she was looking and she's like, why don't you contact these people? And it was the one who reached out initially. And yeah, then we built a little re relationship from there with website closers. Yeah, we, we love referrals. Um, you know, it's great that your, your sister was able to, uh, to do the referral. Um, you know, we pay 10% uh, uh, of our commissions. Anybody out there that's got a friend that wants to sell the business. So your, your story is a little unique because you've, uh, uh, you, you were looking to acquire businesses and you, and you did in this instance, the one that we sold together, uh, you acquired it, uh, kind of rebooted it. And then, uh, and then we took it out to market and uh, you get a pretty good return on your investment. Yeah, it's, uh, it was different because I was initially looking to buy more and I somehow ended up, I don't know what you did, Nate, but you ended up having me sell the business, but no, <laughs> not like that. But uh, it was more so, um, uh, it was, it was kind of like, you know, I, I wanted to free up some cash for some other business ventures that I had recently acquired. So it was like, you know, I, I was like, I, I'm going to need a lot more cash because the other business was a lot bigger. And it was kind of like one of those things where I had to let something go. Um, and the business was doing really well. And I just thought it was a prime time. You know, I didn't want a, uh, a prime time to sell and the market was just, it seemed like everyone was just purchasing. And I was even surprised that, you know, people, how, how often people are buying these businesses and sort of with, you know, what's, what's going on economically, um, how much, uh, essentially how fast it's sold and what people are actually are really moving towards e-commerce versus traditional retail. So it was kind of interesting to, you know, this is my first big exit really. So it was kind of interesting to see that, yeah, people are buying, you know, Amazon businesses and they're buying them fast. And, you know, I think this e-commerce model people are understanding is more sustainable now in terms of long-term with no overhead and tons of, um, the growth uh, possibilities are endless. So yeah, it was kind of like, you know, I want to see how, uh, what the exit could be. And I, I actually didn't own this business for as, as you know, that long of a period of time, about a year and a few months, maybe and it was actually probably more so just on the year dot that we went to market, I would say. And then about a, you know, a couple few weeks in or month in, that was when we made that, um, uh, made the exit. So. Now, so you did a little bit of an analysis in comparing brokerages out there. Um, how, how would you say that uh, we stacked up against the competition? And, you know, what was the, you know, what were some of the primary factors with why you went with us instead of uh, some of the other guys out there? Yeah, uh, the primary reason was I actually bought this same business through another brokerage. And, you know, I initially, um, because I didn't reach out, uh, right, my sister reached out. Initially, I was going with the same brokerage. But, you know, after some thinking and I realized it only makes sense to uh, put the product, put the business out there to a different, different audience and not each brokerage has the same audience. And it wouldn't make like I realized it wouldn't make sense for me to put it with the exact same people that looked at this business a year ago. Um, it's just to get it in front of different eyes and more eyes. Right. Um, you know, so it really was it didn't really benefit me that much to put it with the same brokerage, with the same commission, whatever structure they had. Um, especially when, I mean, the audiences grow year to year, but you know, their buyer pool, I'm not sure how much it would have grown in that year. And, um, you know, what I paid for the business and what I was thinking, you know, what they presented me at, what they, they thought it was worth. Uh, I just, I, th I, I thought I'd had a better shot at putting it with somebody else and seeing what, you know, what the mark market could dictate. And as you know, I wasn't really in a rush to sell. Like I, it wasn't something that I had to get rid of right away. So 
you know, and, um, and com comparatively speaking, uh, the valuation that, that we assessed, uh, would you rate it as the same higher, lower than the other brokerage? It was significantly higher. It was, um, you know, if we were to calculate like based on what I, the other brokerage was putting at versus this, the other brokerage was coming at almost a two flat, 2.1, 2.2 multiple. That's on your, uh, monthly net times, uh, the amount of months, uh, and one being 12 months, but, uh, it was, it was about two, 2.1, which I just felt was way too low, especially, you know, the business I sold was a little unique because it, it wasn't a traditional Amazon business. It actually had some IP to it, it had some patents and we were part of programs where we could dictate that market in that sector by taking anybody off that we wanted to having, you know, the kind of that court order through Amazon to, um, so it wasn't a straight up, I just felt it wasn't, you know, if it was a straight up Amazon business, that didn't have this kind of extra aspect to it. Maybe it would have been a little bit lower. I just felt there was a little more than just a traditional, you know, personally as me with my um, knowledge for the last five years, it's kind of hard to come upon a business that has some, something that will pretty much guarantee your stakeholder in that, in that niche. So. Yeah. So we, we came in at a high, a high three, uh, uh, annual, uh, tra so trailing 12 month annual, uh, valuation. And, uh, we went out there. So we started talking, uh, believe in June, we got out, uh, enlisted in July. We had a contract in August and closed in September. So yeah, there was, uh, it was, it was really quick. We actually closed one day earlier than when we were supposed to close. So. Yep. And, we, uh, we, uh, it was pretty on time. The timeline was pretty good. Uh, people we worked with were really straightforward, you know? Um, but in terms of, I think we, we got the offer like probably what two weeks into listing or three weeks. Yeah. yeah about two weeks after it first went live, we, uh, we had an offer. We had, uh, over 80 NDAs in the first, uh, like three days from when we, when we listed. Um, yeah. what's, what's somewhat staggering right now is we're having 500 to 800 new buyers sign up to our email list looking for listings. So we've got this flood of new buyers looking at businesses. Now with that, you've got, you know, folks that will never buy a business. They're just, you know, kind of kicking tires and looking around and stuff. But, uh, you know, here at Website Closures, we pride ourselves on having the biggest marketplace. We've got over a million people following us, either through our email list or our website, our Facebook page, and then also where we syndicate on those other marketplaces. So as you probably caught us on Biz by Sell or, or other places, yeah. we, we remarket on those other platforms and just draw them all in, all with the... Uh, the whole goal of, of finding vetted, uh, you know, serious buyers for sellers like yourself. Yeah, no. And that's definitely, you know, as a, as a seller, I think that's really appealing because I'm on all the platforms. I'm constantly, even if I'm not necessarily looking to buy today, I'm on every platform, subscribe to every newsletter or every, you know, um, automated thing. And I notice, you know, I notice when that listing says under it from Tampa, Florida, I think the location, I have an idea of who it's from, right? Yep. Uh, like on BizBuy and BizQuest and every platform. So you kind of know what, who's marketing um, the product out there more. So it's beneficial to um, understand that with, you know, different brokerages. And, uh, you know, like you said, you know, if I was to sell it with the other one, I would have, you know, given up quite a bit on the table. So. Kind yeah. Of I mean, that, that's, you know, representing hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, in, in your pocket. That's, uh, that's not to be taken lightly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, um, I even thought at a point I was like, Oh, we're okay. I mean, we're putting a price out there. Is anybody going to buy it at this price? You know, I even felt like it was like, okay, it's pretty high, but let's see what happens. And I guess, uh, it worked out. Cause sometimes I guess you undervalue what you have too, at the same time when you're doing, you know, like you sometimes don't necessarily see, you know, the real value and, you know, Amazon FBA and these businesses year to year, I think they're just, especially with what's happened with COVID, it just, I think the multiples are going to continue to go up. Yeah, I, I, that's very common. I'm glad you said that a lot of folks do undervalue uh, their businesses. So, and some folks on the other side are just like, it's sky high. It's just, it's just kind of nuts. So, you know, when I do a valuation, uh, you know, I like to give a range, you know, and, and, and then I like to go to market on the high side. And uh, in this case, uh, I think we closed at less than like 2% or 3%, you know, off of the, uh, of the ask price. And uh, right. so had we not gone out to the market with such an aggressive price, um, you know, could have been thousands of dollars, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, left on the table for you. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, it kind of worked out well, too, because it was a it was a quick close as well. So it wasn't even, um, you know, we were going like, oh, well, let's see what happens in a few months from now. So it worked out pretty well. And, how did, um, I was going to ask, how, how did you feel about the process? So from the time that we first talked to the time that we got listed and then started getting offers, um, you know, what, how did you feel about that, that process, that timeline, the speed of that? Um, you know, where did that sit for you? How did you feel about all that? The, the, the process was fast. Um, I think it, it was good because, you know, everybody was ready to go as soon as it was more so me coming up with the paperwork and handing, you know, getting all the, the finances together and talking with the accountant and figuring that out. That's what more so takes time versus you guys actually listing it. And I think for a few weeks, we were just deciding strategically when to list. I think one of the weeks, it was a holiday or something. We just thought, nah, this week is not a good week just because people, I think it was 4th of July probably, was it? Yep. And it was just like, well, you know, people are going to be, you know, after a long weekend, probably heavy drinking. They're not going to really be, you know, that week's kind of a write off. People are kind of, I, I think, you know, they're just not really looking for business the day after 4th of July. So yeah, uh, I think we waited till the next week to when things kind of calm down a little that, bit. That's exactly right. Yeah. Those, those major holidays, people check out and uh, you know, we're, we get a lot of our, uh, a lot of our responses from our email list. Uh, you know, so people that, you know, are, are checking that every day. It's some folks, it's the first thing they look at in the morning when they get to work. Um, yeah. I, I still look at every, uh, you know, everyone's emails for, for any new businesses, even though I'm uh, trying to buy right away potentially, but you know, something yeah. pops up, you never know, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When a good deal comes up, you got to jump on it, you know, and that's the case that yeah. you experienced, um, you know, it was the people that were earliest to the party, uh, you know, were the ones that were in contention, uh, you know, for, for doing a deal. You can't, you cannot dilly dally on this. You got to jump in quick. That's, that's always been, so I've purchased about, this is my third, I've purchased three businesses, all Amazon. And um, I've noticed that if there's anything kind of like, not in terms of good, but if the price is right, you have to jump on it because, um, if you don't, there's always a whole bunch of other buyers. There's always other people that are looking. And if it's something that's worthwhile, you, you better bet the other people are interested as well. And that's just how it is. You what know? would you say to other sellers that are considering uh, selling their business? And why would you direct them towards me and website closers? Yeah, um, for other sellers, I think they have to look at, well, I had a unique situation because I had purchased the business. So I had to, for me, for it to be worthwhile for me, the price had to be, kind of extreme, not extremely high, but high in the sense that I have to still pay taxes. I still have to, um, you know, count commissions and everything. So, and I still have to factor in the price that I paid for it a year ago. So, you know, this is what had to make sense for me, but somebody who has an Amazon business that they started from scratch, say, um, you know, they have a lot more wiggle room than I did. Right. In that sense. But, you know, if someone's looking out there, I think it's all depending on what they're looking to do. Um, I've always been focused on growth. And for me, growth has always been, you buy, you, you put your spin, fix up the business, you see where the value is, you bring it up and then you sell and then I move on to the next project. That's just been what I've been doing. Um, I try not to look back at all on the past. I was like, ah, oh, crap, I wish I didn't sell that. You know, this, I, I try not to look at back at it at all. I want nothing to do with it afterwards. Of course, after the mandatory, you know, um, period, but, um, more so, uh, I think for other buyers, if they're, if they're even, if they're looking to, it's a good time to make an exit if they need some extra cash or it's something that's a possibility. I know a lot of people maybe don't think Amazon businesses, like what's the, I, cause initially, you know, about four years ago, if you were to ask me, you can sell your Amazon business. I'd be like, who would, who would buy that? I mean, it's all goodwill, right? It's just like, I'm buying, a some reviews and inventory, but in reality it's, you're buying kind of that set, set space in that, in that niche. And, you know, you have this organic uh, business always constantly coming in where you see all these other websites where they have to pay for marketing. You know, I see even more the value of Amazon more because, you know, once you're cemented in their algorithm for many years, you kind of stay up there, which is kind of nice. So. Absolutely. And what, what advice would you have for me as, as a broker? What can I, what can I do better to serve my clients like yourself? I mean, for me, like the exchange is you put a price and you try to get close to the price and you got as close to the price as you could. You even worked with me on, um, you know, our timeline and everything. We kind of discussed and sat down. Um, I think it was pretty straightforward. I can't really say, you know, I, I was more than happy with the price uh, that I got for the business. And I feel like in the end, I think that's what a lot of people are looking for is a, a good, genuine relationship. And, you know, I think we have something moving forward that we can work with on other businesses that I plan to sell. So. 
I think that's uh, I think that's what's important is kind of building these relationships. And I think we, you know, in any few hurdles that we ran into, you know, we discussed and, you know, you're willing to work with me on a lot of things in the sense of, you know, okay, he was, and I think we reno- renegotiated the deal a little bit too. And I remember you going saying, Hey, let's, if that's how you feel, I'll go talk to them. And I think, you know, I ended up getting even more money than I, I was initially um, going to get because I just felt like I had a strong month, uh, going into into close um almost three times what i did last year and i was like wow this just brought the multiple um up so yeah that's the strongest position to be in i love being in that position going into closing uh on on growth you know growth on profit growth on uh on top side revenue that puts us in the best position to be able to maximize the the uh, the value of the company um, I've had some others that were the opposite. They've had some softening as they're going into closing and it's the exact opposite scenario. Now the buyers got some, some, you know, start to want to renegotiate. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's I've awesome. had it. I've had it both ways too. I've had it where I bought the, a business and there's no inventory and um, it was good because, well, it did better than it was supposed to. So it's not a bad problem, but then the problem's on you after you buy it <laughs> to fix that. Right. Yeah. So, you Absolutely. know, it goes both ways, but definitely, yeah, that's a, we definitely, it was a great position to be in for, uh, uh, for me. So I could, uh, you know, try to renegotiate a little bit. Absolutely. Which is generally not the norm, but you know, it was a, it was a crazy month. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. You know, when, when, a, when a deal is struck, everyone, you know, wants to, you know, if it, if it means giving up some on your side, no one wants to do that. Uh, so it, it's always, you know, it has to be a pretty compelling reason, but, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I sure appreciate you giving me your business, uh, for any of you that are watching you and you're thinking about selling your business, it all starts with the valuation. Uh, give me a holler. Faraj, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate the testimonial. Um, for those of you that are watching, stay tuned. We've always got more good stuff coming up in the world of mergers and acquisitions and, uh, online businesses. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Your comments encourage me to continue posting videos and they give me ideas about what to post next. I read and reply to every single one. Also, if you own an online business and you're curious of how much it's worth, click the link below to get a free business valuation with a member of our team. Who knows? It may even be me you're talking to.